Hello and welcome to Week 2 Prime. I'm Hira Daidya. Joining us on the show is Prashant Viani, VP at Institutional Equities, Elara Capital, joining in. Prashant, welcome to the show. Prashant, the conversation today is actually with regards to what's happening with fertilizer counters. In yesterday's session as well, the stocks have been up in the range of almost 3 to 15%. That trend somewhat has continued in today's session as well. There is a lot of pickup coming in. What's the sense that you pick up firstly? So uh, our sense is that, you know, because of the declining prices internationally in the raw material universe, we think that <clears throat> the profitability of the fertilizer companies uh, should improve in second half. And with stable volumes, the absolute uh, profits of the companies should also increase, be it uh, uh, your backward integrated companies within complex universe or even the non-backward integrated ones. So that might be driving the fertilizer stock trends. Right. So what we're trying to see over here is basically the volumes are expected to remain stable. However, it's operational efficiency that is expected to drive fertilizer counters specifically from a raw material price trend. However, when you see natural gas and in terms of other raw materials, is this uh, trend stable in terms of downward trajectory or there is some bit of pressure coming in from natural gas? Yeah, so natural gas uh, and uh, as a result of which ammonia are the only exceptions mm. to this. Other than that, uh, be it your phosphoric acid or rock phosphate, sulfur, and to some extent potash also, for all these raw materials, we are seeing prices declining. And for natural gas as well, I think over the last 10 days, or at least for the last week, mm. we had seen gas prices decline in Europe. Ammonia prices might have declined by around 50 or $100. So gas universe and related products may be the last one to fall in line uh, 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 with the other round uh, of the fertilizer universe. Right. So overall, from a translation perspective, by how much do you see margins getting a boost on an average basis for fertilizer companies in the second half of the year? Yeah. So uh, more than margins, it is the EBITDA part, and, uh, which is hmm. uh, the key profitability determinant. So I think on a YAY basis, we should see double digit growth in EBITDA per ton. And for the non-backward integrated ones, uh, they were the ones who were making loss if they would have been manufacturing uh, DAP last year or for the major part of the last 12 months. So for them, uh, now you know uh, they can move away from only manufacturing NPK to DAP as well. So profitability wise, we think double digit growth should be there vis-a-vis uh, -vis last year. Right. And with all of this said and done, another big trigger that everyone is watching out for will be in terms of the run up to the budget as well. Uh, are we expecting any major announcements on that front? Because we already have the farmers who've met the government ahead of the budget to understand the requirement. What, what comes out of there, that wash? So on the agri input side or even the fertilizer space, it is, uh, what subsidy the government decides for the industry. Hmm. will be a major uh, major thing to watch out for other than that other than this we are not expecting anything material uh, for the fertilizer sector uh, yes government has been uh, trying to implement dbt in the fertilizer sector for the last 4 5 years but given that this is also a bit politically sensitive thing to implement uh, because of the teething factors uh, in the initial part of the implementation so we are not expecting DBT to get implemented in the fertilizer sector right now. Uh, so the only thing which remains is, you know, how much provision the, does the government make for the fertilizer industry? Right. So as for if you see in terms of FI23 uh, as a year itself, uh, already you have, you know, that the current subsidy has been fixed. Now, are you seeing the subsidy for next year, which is FI24 increase? Or do you think taking the raw material price trend into consideration, there is a possibility that the government will reduce the subsidy? So there is a very real, uh, very real chance of, you know, uh, fertilizer subsidy uh, getting uh, lower. Uh, uh, by uh, lower, I mean to say government may or may not reduce it. But the mm. actual claims from the industry may decline uh, because of the falling raw material price. For example, mm. in phosphoric acid, the prices in Q2 were $1715 $1, per ton. 
in Q3, the prices are down to around $1,200. Wow. And for sulfur also, the prices which were hovering at $500 in Q2 are right now between $150 to $200. So if the downward trajectory continues, and, and as I told, if the natural gas prices also fall in line, and it also starts to correct then there's a very uh, then there's a very realistic probability that the uh, claims from the industry itself will be lower uh, irrespective of the fact that you know even if the government provides for higher subsidies right and with all of this said and done another aspect where you know everyone's talking about is where russia is likely to impose a 23 and a half percent you know export duty on fertilizers do you think that's something which can have a trickle down effect of an India or it's just going to be a sentimental impact? No, I don't see it having a major impact except maybe on potash because mm. in potash, Russia, Belarus and Canada are the major supplier to the world. Other than for potash, uh, because right now we are in a falling market in fertilizer prices internationally and this decline is driven more by softening of demand rather than uh, lower supplies. Supplies are abundant because the demand is lower and there are suppliers from other geographies like China, Morocco, Egypt, Jordan, uh, even Saudis are now coming up in a big way in phosphatic fertilizer. Hmm. So it may be a point that, you know, the Russian manufacturers themselves might take the hit on it or it may be shared partially with the Indian companies, but I don't see a material impact of it. As far as Indian companies are concerned, they will also see, you know, which geography give me the low, lowest cost fertilizer. Mm -hmm. If it is Russia, then even after taking into account the export tax, uh, we will buy from Russia. If it is any other geography, which is giving us more competitive prices, then we move to other geographies, I would believe. So the export duty part, which is going to get implemented is, is unlikely to have a material impact for the Indian company. Right. So, you know, when you just mentioned about phosphoric acid as well and taking the Russia angle into consideration, would it be right to say that the companies which have a higher backward integration in phosphoric acid will be the ones to save on this, however, and enjoy better EBITDA per ton? However, the only the ones who are importing phosphoric acid are the ones who might see an impact. And if yes, which would those companies be? Actually, in uh, in the lower uh, raw material price trending scenario, it, uh, traders and manufacturers both mm. will make profit. Uh, rather, the swing in profitability for traders or non-backward integrated manufacturers will be higher. Backward integrated manufacturers like Koro and Paradeep were the ones who were able to maintain their profitability in times of rising price. Uh, but now that you know the prices are declining, even the traders can make money. So uh, now is the time when you when we may see you know higher imports also coming in because right now imports of fertilizers are also import of DAP and uh, NPK is also profitable now. So uh, it uh, it's a sort of a profit making proposition for all so all kind of manufacturers as well as traders. Right. So all of these positives that we're already talking about right now prashant do you think that the stock prices or valuations have already priced it in or do you think it does become a longer term bet from here on so uh, uh, for coromandel uh, 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 i still think that there is a significant amount of upside which is yet to be captured in the stock and especially in second half of the current financial year also we are likely to see a decent profitability jump in my view and for the if we have a horizon of next two three years then paradeep phosphate is likely to see a good volume growth in the next two three years because of the new capacities that they are likely to that they are coming up with so both uh, complex fertilizer uh, manufacturing companies uh, which is a coro and paradeep are good bet uh, from here on Chambal even though has a good upside, but uh, in the next two, two years, I think the earnings may see a calibrated growth because of lack of new projects that are coming up in the short, uh, in the short or medium term. Right. And overall, if you see from a run up to budget perspective, what would the stocks that you would recommend? So I would be recommending uh, Koromandal, and uh, again if the uh, if the raw prices continue to decline, then the working capital release will also be much faster. 
which will lead to higher cash generation for the companies. So that should also benefit Paradeep Phosphate as well. And uh, if this uh, trickle down impact of declining raw material price, if we see in uh, in the in natural gas also, then it should benefit the urea manufacturers as well. Uh, that mm. will benefit Chambal uh, as well as all these factors will benefit government of India also in the form of lower subsidy. So we uh, we like all the three pri- private sector fertilizer companies. Right. So overall, yes, it seems to be a positive scenario for fertilizer stocks from here on. And I think they can be a part of your portfolio, right, from a one to two year perspective. Sure. Yes. Thank you. All right, Prashant, thank you so much for speaking to us at BQ Prime and thank you for giving us uh, your perspective. And the up move continues for a second consecutive session as well, if you see in terms of where fertilizer stocks are concerned. And as Prashant mentioned as well, that clearly the major reason is the downtick that we are seeing in terms of where raw material prices are concerned. And that is something which could give a boost to uh, the operational efficiency of fertilizer companies. Thank you so much for watching.